Hey, Mr. Grumpy Gills. When life gets you down, you know what you gotta do? I don't wanna know what you gotta do. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, swimming, swim. You ever feel like invincible? You know what I mean? Like you're just. I mean, maybe I could count on <laughs> one, like, two fingers gotta, how many times I've You gotta understand is that I lived a certain life for 10 years and faced almost no real consequence at all. I had no no version of the story that didn't end up with me being fine. Yeah, I, I made a stupid mistake. I'm a human being, like, drove home drunk, and but it was the best thing that could have happened. Best thing that could have happened. I needed that. And you get the, you get the urge and, and the itch to tell people, don't worry, I'm okay. Don't worry, I'm okay. <laughs> Shit! Oh my god. The fuck am I even supposed to say about this? Yeah. When Mac Miller's album Swimming released, it didn't resonate with me on a level deep enough to excuse its hazy sound and monotone vocals, and I pretty much overlooked it. Well, for the first month that it was out, at least. I was just a kid in high school, the only thing that I wanted to hear was catchy flows and banging beats. I had no interest in hearing about Mac Miller and his struggle with drugs. But even when it dropped, I loved songs like 2009, Wings, Come Back to Earth. There was something so deeply vulnerable and honest about Mac's charisma on this record that I found myself developing this personal connection with him even after just a couple listens to the point where I was genuinely interested in him and his journey. Swimming came at a pivotal point in Mac Miller's career. His drug habit had become increasingly more prevalent in his life and therefore his music and lyrical content, and he had just ended a very public and very promising relationship with Ariana Grande. It was a pretty safe assumption to think that this new record would be soul-crushing considering how blissful and idealistic the Divine Feminine was. Knowing Mac felt that way about Ariana gives us a pretty good idea of how hard it was going to be to get over her. And of course, Mac has had only one good coping mechanism throughout his life. But swimming seemed to find Mac Miller holding a completely different perspective on himself than any other record in his discography. There's nothing pretty about swimming. Mac himself is devoid of any of the swagger or chipper personality that made him so popular initially. It was clear that this record was intended to step away from all of that and seek a new beginning, which I think is why this album has been so cathartic for myself and a lot of other people too. I'm sure this record before it released was expected to see Mac much more down in the dumps, performing from rock bottom trying to escape his depression after his breakup with Ariana. But it flat out wasn't. It was about self-improvement, healing from emotional trauma, accepting your past and moving forward. It was somber, but hopeful. For the first time, Max stopped treading water and he started swimming. Yeah, he's 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 swimming. But w wait, no. What's happening? I thought we were getting better. I thought Mac was on a path of redemption. Please, no, no, no. When we saw what we believe to be Miller's body being transported into a coroner's van, we've seen investigators walking in and out of the home and Variety, among other outlets, is reporting Miller, whose real name is Malcolm James McCormick, age 26, died of an apparent overdose. On rapper Mac Miller's doorstep, those close to him struggling with the fact that he is gone. He tricked us. Swimming isn't about progressing or escaping your depression. It's about ignorance and the hopelessness of trying to escape suffering. Because we can swim all we want, but whatever's helping us swim away from where we were before is eventually going to be the thing that takes us right back to that same pain we felt in square one. Because we're swimming in circles. When Mac Miller passed and Circles eventually came out, the entire concept of swimming and our view of Mac's entire mental state at that time changed. There's this odd peacefulness 
to circles. It doesn't have that dreariness that riddled the sound of swimming. The instrumentation is often much more organic and pristine, as if it's almost heavenly. But when you read the lyrics to the songs on this record, it's abundantly clear how hard it was for Mac to keep moving forward despite his determination to improve when he recorded swimming. With lines like, some people want to live forever, that's way too long, let's just get through today, or so tired of being so tired, or there's a lot more waiting for me on the other side, it's hard to believe Mac made it as long as he did. The subject matter on Circles is so dark, so dismissive, and frankly so suicidal, yet it doesn't have the self-loathing or depression or demoralization of a suicidal person. In fact, the sound and delivery Mac gives us on this record is worlds more soothing and untroubled than anything on Swimming, and that means something. With the knowledge that Mac is now in a better place and he was relieved to escape the pain he was feeling on Swimming, Let's revisit that album with Circles as context so we can understand what Mac was really trying to tell us just one month before he would leave us forever. My regrets look just like Texas shootings. The intro, Come Back to Earth, introduces us to a Mac Miller that is, metaphorically, in an alternate reality. As he proclaims in the song, he's finally living in this alternate reality, which has given him the ability to stop drowning and start swimming. Mac being outside of reality can mean two things, depending on how you look at this and then the context that follows, but I think that both apply. Mac is simultaneously trying to escape his depression and anxiety, he's inside of his own head, and he is also high on drugs. Both of these apply to what happens in the next 12 tracks, as Mac tries to come back to Earth. Yeah. Mac switches up the vibe immediately on track two with a trap flavored vortex of swag bars and flexing. The track superficially looks like a hater's anthem. Mac addresses his artistic drawbacks in two verses that employ these concise metaphors and vivid pictures of random imagery. But this track, especially where it's placed in the track list at number two, seems to illustrate a bigger picture that's greater than the sum of its parts. With this artistic journey and the purpose of the album that Mac set up in Come Back to Earth, it's almost like he's immediately addressing the question, what are you going to change about yourself? Because Mac hasn't come down to earth since his career started, so it would seem that he would have to grow in order to do that. More specifically, he would have to step away from the issues that have plagued him from day one, but Mac is telling us on hurt feelings that he refuses to do so. Mac delves further into this stubborn character choice on track three, what's the use? This is one of the biggest highlights on the record for me. These vibrant synths are refreshing and blissful. Max sounds much more animated here. And of course, Thundercat shows what I think is some of his best feature work in his entire career. With Max sounding a bit more chipper and the instrumentation being a bit more organic than what the record typically offers, I'm inclined to think that this is representative of a drug-induced high. But this isn't like a typical drug trip that we would see visualized inside of music. The feelings that the drugs are bringing Mac make him feel not out of his mind and in a dark place. They make him feel the most like himself and that's really scary. This idea is further reflected in the lyrics as Mac continues to resist change, proclaiming himself as a person who will always be all in or all out. He sees no point in doing only a little bit of drugs or drinking alcohol in moderation. He asks himself, what's the use? Hurt feelings and what's the use very much seem like Mac trying to justify himself or provide adequate reasoning for being stuck in his ways. It's representative of denial, and this front is very thin and flimsy. It makes him seem lost and confused. Fortunately, track 4, Perfecto, at least gives us a little bit of realness as for his rationale for being the way he is. Well, it ain't perfect, but I don't mind. This track contains a small character arc inside of itself, as Mac brings us back to the concept of swimming. Throughout this track, Mac comes forward about feeling like he needs to put on a face for his fans, or act like everything's okay, to present himself like someone who has it all together, even if that front is just contributing to a struggle. On the first pre-chorus, Mac tells us that he's treading water, and he doesn't care if he drowns. But as he acknowledges emotional trauma and his pain throughout the song, he gets to the point where he is finally swimming, 
and on the second pre-chorus he raps about finally being in control of his problems, his life isn't perfect, but he doesn't mind. And yet, it isn't because the issues hurting him aren't that bad or because he thinks they'll get better, it's because of the one thing that's gotten him through for years and will carry him through now. Yeah. Tell me you love me, spin me around. Pretty please pick me up in the air and don't put me down. Seen it all unfold, sat back and watched. No one time, don't give a fuck about clocks until they stop. Bare feet, running late, her car started, even though the only thing that she driving a hard bargain. More important is I'm kinda sorta out the door, but she put me back together when I'm out of order. Perfect. There's this double entendre between women and drugs that Mac introduces here that shows up throughout the record, which is an important concept to understand to fully conceptualize his downward spiral, but we'll come back to that later. I love that line where he raps about his bare feet and how he's worried the car is going to start and leave without him. It's referencing the album cover, which I think is important. It'll help us visualize the first leg of the album and where Mac is at. Mac is not okay. He's not where he needs to be, and with the situation at hand, he's never going to get there. Yet he's trying as hard as he can to show everyone that he is fine. On the cover, we see Mac wearing a beautiful pink suit. His beard is trimmed. He looks ready to go to an awards ceremony and put on a brave face for everyone. But look at where he is. There's a window that you would sit next to on a plane, thousands of feet up in the air. And he's in the middle of this white blank void of nothingness representing his thoughts and mind alienating him from the world around him, as well as being high. But on top of all this, look at Mac's feet. They're dirty. Despite what he wants everyone to think, what he's showing us on the outside, he's completely stuck, and he's worn from the journey with no way back. He's spent so much time making sure the outside was presentable to everyone around him that the inside gets dirtier and dirtier as time goes on. And also, is that box that he's sitting in? Is that a coffin? You know, people have assumed that I'm, you know, like, are you okay? Is everything okay? Like, why did you drop off line? Because I was about to drop an album. And also, like, I, it, I don't know. It just all seemed kind of, like, unimportant. Hmm. Do you know, like, like the need to show people I was okay. Like, what, what is that? Where does that come from? Why, why do we have this need to use social media and... I don't feel like Mac Miller being stuck in his ways is out of a sense of stubbornness or pride to push back against what everyone else says, even though he's trying to convince us that that's what he's doing on songs like Hurt Feelings. That's never really been Mac Miller's MO. Have you ever had a friend who could see that you were struggling and wanted to help you? They wanted to get you out of that place, out of a, a sense of genuine concern. How did you react to that person? Because for me, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, it's almost uncomfortable. Like you don't want that support from that person. It's too much. You don't want other people to carry that burden that's on your shoulders. It's yours alone. And so you push that person away. You would rather carry it alone. You know they're offering to help you. You know that they will help you, but you say, no, no, don't worry. They say, no, no, I can help you. We can get through this together, trust me. And you say, no, don't worry, I'm okay. I'll be fine, but you're not. And that's exactly what this album is. Mac wasn't doing better. He was literally killing himself with substances. He needed people. He needed support. He needed a group around him, but he pushed them away. He pushed them away for years and years. And when he realized that people were still going to be concerned about him, he had only one way left to get them off his back. Show them I'm doing better, even though I'm not. Self-care is what seems like a turning point in the album. The first half serves as a culmination of Mac's attitude up until this point in the record, and the latter part, named Oblivion, is a retrospective monologue of regret. In the music video, Mac starts inside of a coffin, still very much alive, as he lights a cigarette. This part of the song, as Mac raps I'm treating me right, tells us that, despite the vagueness of his lyrics, his idea of self-care is very much still substance abuse. On the verses, he raps multiple concerning lines like somebody save me from myself or feeling like I'm hot enough to melt. Mac is starting to finally understand the root of his problems, which seems to come to actuality in part two of the song. Wait, did he just carve Memento Mori into the coffin? Memento Mori. 
remember you have to die. <laughs> Wait, what? Oblivion, to me, is the place that we found Mac in at the start of this very album. When he's trying to get back to Earth, Oblivion is where he's stuck in. The psychedelic synths, the glittering bells and whistles, the clunky spacey drums, it sounds like you're floating aimlessly in space, wallowing in the drugs and your own thoughts. This realization, this acknowledgement of Mac's past and the need to change his form of self-care, creates a change, a turning point in this record. The narrative that follows is a bit more unfocused, it jumps around, since Mac is now working with trial and error to try and find solace in something other than a girlfriend or substance abuse. Mac is finally swimming now, but where does he go? Wings is kind of hollow. It's my favorite song on this album. This emptiness and the downplayed emotional undertones of this track create this almost shocking stark contrast from self-care, which had such a full and healthy instrumental on both halves. It's about Mac finally making an effort to move past his struggles to create a better life for himself. The chorus illustrates this mindset beautifully as Mac compares gambling on his own mortality to predicting the weather. He just doesn't know. But then he says that he can actually see the sun shining because the horizon is clear to him, indicating that the light at the end of the tunnel is finally in his eyesight. He's found his wings, and he's going to use them, which plays perfectly into the next track, Ladders. He uses the wings metaphor to inform this idea that climbing to the top is what Mac has decided will finally relieve him of his pain. Maybe he will take solace in the fact that he's winning more than everyone else around him, that he can drown in his own excess until... until... Until he realizes that the higher you climb, the harder you fall. And even before you fall, the fear of heights causes just as much emotional trauma as having no success at all. So maybe, maybe it's time to go back and actually work through that trauma. Live a happy life regardless of where you are. Yeah, the world is so small till it ain't. Small Worlds is the first recognition of Mac's breakup with Ariana Grande that we get on this track list, but even still, the track is more so focused on Mac's flaws in general, and his struggles to build authentic relationships with anyone. In one of the most creative ways I've ever heard of expressing loneliness, Mac takes the it's a small world phrase and flips it on its head by saying it's a small world until it's not. When someone says it's a small world, it's usually when they see someone they're indirectly connected with by a friend or a mutual family member, but they see them in a completely unrelated circumstance. You wouldn't expect to see that person in that scenario, but you did because it's a small world. Mac here is expressing feelings that he's unable to resonate with people that he should be connecting with, that he should have a deep relationship to. And it's heartbreaking, but man, it's such a genius concept. Mac takes accountability for this, kind of staying on a close but no cigar concept during the verses, but it's in the outro where Mac finally, for the first time on this record, gives us an unfiltered and honest view of what's actually going on in his life. Nine times out of ten I get it wrong That's why I wrote this song Tell myself to hold on I can feel my fingers slipping in a motherfucking instant I'll be gone Do you want it all if it's all mediocre? Staring at the wall in a wall full of posters Looking in my dreams, who I wanna be I guess you gotta see it to believe Who I've been a fool, but it's cool That's what human beings do Keep your eyes to the sky, never glued to your shoes Guess there was a time when my mind was consumed But the sun coming out now, clouds start to move Don't tell me nothing but the truth I'm tired, I don't got a spare second Winner lose, winner lose I don't keep count, nobody checking Mac Miller is slipping He sees the sun, the light at the end of the tunnel But like he says at the end of this verse he doesn't have a spare tire left. He's almost out of fuel. You know, people think this album is so honest and vulnerable and Mac being so upfront with how he feels in himself. 
And I just don't see that. Small Worlds is the first real understanding that Mac gives us of where he's actually at. And it's coded. It's covered in these literary devices and metaphors. And he's telling us that he literally feels like he's teetering the line between dying and living a blissfully peaceful life. How does that line even get drawn? The only way to understand is to reflect, to think of times that were better, when you were happy, where you were where you wanted to be, when times were good, better. She do whatever she like. That just don't seem right. The last four songs on this project just sound like a sputtering engine that won't start with their different aesthetics and subject matters, and Don't Know starts this in quite a potent manner. This song is blatantly dedicated to Ariana Grande. The lyrics are simple and straightforward, which is a refreshing change of pace from the complex puzzles on most of the songs before it. This track feels like a long text message that Mac wrote out, but just didn't send as he gives this urgent appeal to just forget these issues and love each other to go back to the way things were. I'm almost inclined to think that Mac wrote this while they were still together, as the track has this resolution at the end where they made up exactly the way he wanted, which obviously in the long term is not the case. Unfortunately, in a shock to reality, Mac realizes that she's not still there for him on the next track. He's lost her, and in his attempt to progress and improve from his past, He's run out of jet fuel to ease that pain. This track is a complete regression back to where Mac was mentally at the start of this album. This is reflective in how the song sounds sonically, the production sounding similar to the songs on the first leg of the album, with the hazy synths and trap sounding drums forging the instrumental, and Mac's voice returning to the state where it's drowned in reverb, reflecting the effect of drugs that we heard on songs like Hurt Feelings and Perfecto. Mac has realized that he ran out of jet fuel, so he woke up with a bright idea to, well, get some more. He raps on the first chorus that he'll be here for longer than he expected, telling us that he's not quite ready to get rid of his addiction just yet. However, the double meaning between girls and drugs that was present earlier on in the track list returns here. Jet Fuel following Don't Know in the track list indicates that Ariana and her relationship with Mac was also a form of catharsis, something that kept him out of trouble. His reflection on their time together and his failure to keep his relationship gave him the realization that he's out of jet fuel, which made the drugs easy to fall back into. And now Mac is back at square one. And while he seems so convicted in his verses that he doesn't need anybody and nobody can tell him nothing, the outro to the song is a bone chilling realization of just how hopeless the situation is. He's in too deep. His fate, his entire life, it's in the hands of his addiction. This is so scary. Let's just go back before the pain, before the struggle, before, before it all just became so real. It's not 2009 anymore. Mac Miller's fame started in the year of 2009 when he released his breakout mixtape, Kids. His popularity stemmed from what he popularized as frat rap where he rhymed over goofy beats about silly topics, and he was one of the most likable young faces in hip-hop. Fast forward to 2018, and Mac Miller is known for being one of the most depressed and troubled artists in not just rap, but all of music. 2009 is the compulsion, the heartbreak of wanting to go back to simpler times, of realizing you took things for granted, for regretting the decisions you've made. Now that you know what's behind that door, you wish you never opened it in the first place, and you want to go back, but you can't, and there's nothing you can do to make things the way they were. You can't go back to being happy like you were in 2009. All that pain, all that heartbreak, you just you just have to live with that, and that's 
it's not fair. It's not. It's not. It's not fair. <sighs> because we're swimming in circles. In 2009, when Mac Miller came into the game, he was one of the most charismatic and, well, happy hip hop artists that there were. But there was that one thing, and that was the substance abuse problem. After a few years, Mac's sound became more somber. It had this poignant soberness to it. He was still Mac Miller, but he wasn't just a kid now. His entire life had changed, except for one thing. By the time we reached Faces, Mac was literally predicting his own death on the microphone, telling us that he should be dead. But then he got together with Ariana Grande, and that happy Mac Miller returned. The Divine Feminine had so much more of that pristine blissfulness that made him so popular when he first became famous. But that didn't last, of course, and we reached swimming, and Mac is the most depressed he's ever been. And there's only one thing that this Mac Miller has in common with that high school kid in 2009 that just became famous, because he's swimming in circles. That facade, that thin veil of moving forward but still staying stagnant is what brings the entire circles idea together. The record feels like Mac is starting to see some hope because he's realizing he's finally stopped treading water and he's starting to swim to move forward but the end is like a hard slap to the face when he realizes, despite the fact that he's finally moving, he's going back to where he was before. No matter what you do, life is really just stagnant. You choose to stay where you are and suffer, or you can move, put yourself out there, just to end up right where you were before anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So it goes as clunky, it's different from anything on this entire project, and it's horrifyingly direct. There's only one phrase in this entire track that's worth talking about. So It Goes was a phrase that was initially coined by Kurt Vonnegut in his novel Slaughterhouse-Five. It's a popular murder mystery that is often studied in literature classes today. And the phrase So It Goes, it occurs every time that somebody dies. A screenshot of the song was also the last thing that Mac posted on social media the day that he died on September 7th that year. He knew. He had to have known. He wrote this album knowing it would tell the story of his death. My God, it go on and on, just like a circle, like go back where I'm from. And so I guess what we're wondering now, where's the resolution to these problems? How do we escape the pain and hopelessness that Mac is dealing with on this record? How do we make sure it doesn't happen to us? And I, I just don't know. I usually like to end these videos with a lesson, something we can take away from the record, what we can learn from the artists in their journey. And there's just, there's nothing. I mean, Mac is dead. He swam in circles until he dies. There's no lesson there. It's just, just sadness. Obviously, I'm, I'm a, you know, everybody's gonna deal with their situation their own way, but do I fault him? Am I upset with the way he handled things? Especially knowing how he just ultimately ended up making a record filled with anticipating an early demise and he was okay with it. And I'm trying to spend my last moments telling other people not to be upset. A lot of the appeal of what you do is going to come down to how you present it. And I think uh, uh, this record is a key example of that. <sighs> this was so good. And it's very sad to know that Mac will not be progressing past this point. But um, I'm not sure if fans could have asked for a better musical send off, I suppose. So I know a lot of you aren't really interested in hearing about my college classes, especially not my Bible classes because I'm in the field of biblical study, but bear with me here. There's a truth I've had to come to terms with recently when I look at the dark and morbid stories in history. It's a truth that's important to understand when you try and learn from anybody that came before you. We've all heard the phrase, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. It's a principle that is pretty much universally accepted, it seems rational. But I've been studying the Old Testament this semester and learning about how the Israelites, no matter how much God tried to help them, couldn't live up to his standard, and it's caused me to take this concept a bit further. I think what's even more important to understand about studying the past 
is that the only real thing that we can learn from history is that people don't learn from history. And that includes us. Swimming is a living rhetorical proof of this. Max downward spiral, his pattern of depression to substance abuse to a slight improvement only to fall back down even harder again is a poignant way of explaining to us that life in and of itself is just cyclical. There's the scripture I read in Ecclesiastes about how life is just about repeating things that happened in the past, that nothing is truly new. And to be honest, that's pretty true. Max saw through this facade of the world. He understood the circle he was in and realized that even though he's swimming, he's moving, he's not going forward. He's stuck on this one fixated path. And this record is Max's live discovery and reaction to that epiphany. The songs that seem hopeful, the messages of self-care, healing emotional trauma, moving on with your life, these aren't diary entries of what Mac is actually doing. It's him rapping about where he wants to be. And so how do we fix this? There's another quote that I read a few weeks ago, and it was given by someone who assumed his audience knew the universal truth that life is suffering. And I think Mac's career is indicative of that. He said, the purpose of life, as far as I can tell, is to find a mode of being so meaningful that the fact that life is suffering is no longer relevant. And he's so right. There is only one way to break the cyclical nature of life. Find a way to live that picks you up out of that suffering, something to chase that will make that sadness irrelevant. And if we can do that, we don't need coping mechanisms. We don't need other people to be a crutch, to be our only source of happiness. We find it from within. The answers Mac gives us in his music aren't found in what he does. It's found in what he doesn't do and what he fantasizes about. I'd like to think that he understood this, but was okay with being the sacrificial lamb so he could teach us to find that mode of being, to find that purpose. That way it'll pick us up out of this downward spiral and put us in a new circle, but one that brings prosperity and peace. And that's what Circles is. Mac was ready to die. He left us with something that will give us the peace he never had as we use him as an example to become something greater, something more meaningful, something happier. And in doing that, Mac Miller found the peace he never had in his life, and it's my prayer that he carried that with him into death. <laughs>